ahead of the 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix, I thought I'd take the opportunity to make a video about a driver who made his F1 debut 5 years ago at this race. A debut so strong, he was promoted to a race seat the following year. This is Lost Stars, Stoffel Van Dorn. In this video, we look at Van Dorn's early career, his time in F1, and what he did after leaving F1. Stoffel Van Dorn was born on the 26th of March 1992 in Kortrijk, Belgium. Like most drivers, Van Dorn would start his career in karts, first winning the Belgian KF2 Championship in 2008, before stepping up to the KF2 World Cup in 2009, finishing in second. In 2010, we see Van Dorn receive support from the RACB's Young Driver Program, enabling him to move into cars. He would participate in the F4 Eurocup 1.6 with Autosport Academy, shining in the series, picking up 6 wins and 3 podiums and route to the title. This performance earned him a place in the FIA Driver Academy for 2011. Meanwhile, the prize money earned allowed him to step up to Formula Renault 2.0 with KTR for 2011, embarking on twin programs in the Euro Cup and the Northern European Cup Series. He would finish 5th in the Euro Cup with a single podium at Hunger Roaring, while finishing 3rd in the NEC with 8 podiums. For 2012, Van Den would remain in Formula Renault 2.0, switching over to Joseph Kaufman Racing. While he would participate in selected NEC races, his main focus for the year was in the Euro Cup, where he would deny Dan Kivet the title by a 10-point margin, with 4 wins and 7 podiums. This success would then lead to McLaren signing Van Dorn to his young driver program in early 2013, joining Kevin Magnussen, Nick DeVries and Ben Barnacourt. 2013 would see Van Dorn make the step out to Formula Renault 3.5 with Fortec, replacing 2012 champion Robin Freins. Van Dorn would put up a strong performance throughout the season as Magnussen's chief championship rival. Despite being a rookie, he finished second in the standings with 4 wins and 6 podiums, coming 60 points adrift off Magnussen. That year, he would also dip his toes into GT racing, participating in the Baku World Challenge of the FIA GT Series with Boston Genian Racing. 2014 would see Van Dorn move to the GP2 series with ART Grand Prix, partnering Honda Protege Takuya Izawa. Van Dorn would impress on track once more, taking second in the standings as a rookie, with 4 wins and 6 podiums, and a total of 229 points. In contrast, Izawa would finish 18 with 26 points and a single podium. 2015 saw Van Dorn remain in GP2 with ART, partnered by Honda Protege Nobuharu Matsushita. Van Dorn would dominate the season, emerging as champion with a gap of 160 points over second place Alexander Rossi. Van Dorn would take 7 wins and 9 podiums and route to the title, with a total of 341 and a half points. For 2016, Van Dorn would move to Japan, participating in the Super Formula Championship while serving as McLaren's third driver. Van Dorn had a strong campaign in Super Formula, with 2 wins and a podium to finish 4th as the top Honda powered driver. In the wake of Fernando Alonso's crash in Australia, McLaren called out Van Dorn to replace him for the Bahrain Grand Prix, giving the Belgian his Grand Prix debut. Van Dorn performed strongly throughout the weekend, reaching Q2 and out qualifying button while finishing 10 to score a point on his debut. His performances drew praise from many, including Alonso, who labelled Van Dorn's performances as outstanding and stated that Van Dorn had a great future ahead. On the 3rd of September 2016, ahead of the Italian Grand Prix, McLaren announced that Button would not be racing in 2017, with Van Dorn taking his place. 2017 came about and by the end of pre-season testing, it was obvious that McLaren were bracing for a painful season ahead. The Honda Power Unit was unreliable, interrupting the team's preparations and preventing them from achieving any kind of consistent on-track running. By the end of testing, McLaren had only completed 425 laps within 8 days, while Mercedes had over 1,000 laps. The car also lacked performance, with both drivers posting times near the bottom of the timesheets. Australia would see Van Dorn qualify in 18 and finish 13, last of the classified finishers and 2 laps down, which in all honesty was something to celebrate about, despite effectively being last. Especially once you took into consideration that in testing, McLaren only averaged 53 laps a day. Unfortunately, there really wasn't much to celebrate for the next two races because McLaren's reliability gremlins would come back to hit the Belgian. In China, he would retire with a gearbox issue, but in Bahrain, he wouldn't even take the start of the race due to a water pressure issue. In 2017, Vendor with a total of six retirements. That said, not every retirement was caused by reliability related problems. In fact, for Vendor at least, the car was actually mostly reliable in the races after Bahrain. The only time he would retire in the races due to a car problem would be in Italy, where his car suffered an electrical fault. The remaining three retirements in Spain, Monaco and Brazil would be due to Van Dorn getting involved in accidents. But back to the car anyway, to make it reliable, it came at quite a cost. Van Dorn would clock out grip penalties exceeding 200 places as a result of constant power unit component changes. These included a whopping 65 place grip penalty and his home race in Belgium. And while the car steadily got more reliable in the races at least, it continued to be down on power, 
giving Van Dorn with very few opportunities to fight for points. As a result, he only scored points in Hungary, Singapore and Malaysia, with a best finish of 7 in Singapore and Malaysia, to end off the season with 13 points. So, at the end of the season, this was how the head-to-head -head with Alonso looked like. Qualifying saw Van Dorn defeated 3-16, in the race, 2-7, and in the points, 13-17, lagging 4 points behind Alonso. Now, if taken out of context, it looked like a disastrous season for Van Dorn, except that Van Dorn was a rookie and up against Fernando Alonso, one of the toughest teammates any rookie could have. And depending on how you saw it, the car or engine, or rather both, were rubbish. So at the end of the day, it really was a decent rookie season for Van Dorn. 2018 then rolled around and out went the Honda engine, with the MCL33 being powered instead by a Renault engine. Testing went decently for McLaren, and for the first few races at least, McLaren was somewhat competitive in the midfield. Austria and Bahrain saw McLaren pick up a double point finish, but after that, things just went south for the team, or probably I should say Van Dorn, because after the first two rounds, Van Dorn would just go two more times in Azerbaijan and in Mexico. And if you're wondering how qualifying went, it was an absolute bloodbath, 21-0 with 0 for Van Dorn. Then, on the 3rd of September 2018, it was announced that Van Dorn would be departing the team, with Lando Norris replacing him. So for 2018, Van Dorn's report card was rather bleak. Qualifying some defeated 0 to 21 by Alonso, and the same thing applied to the race where he was defeated at 3 to 10, and in the points where he lagged behind Alonso by 38 points, scoring 12 points to Alonso's 50. Later in the year, Van Dorn would join HWA Race Lab, driving a customer venture for the 2018 to 19 Formula E season. Initially, it was a tough start with a lack of results and reliability, but Van Dorn would take pole in Hong Kong, following up two races later with a podium in Rome. He would then finish the season on a relative high by picking up points in four of the five final races of the season. With the close links HWA has to Mercedes, it came with little surprise that Mercedes would sign Vendor as its simulator driver for 2019. Vendor would also make a brief return to sports cars with SMP Racing in the FIA World Endurance Championship, which saw Vendor finish third overall at Spa and Le Mans. For the 2019-20 Formula E season, HWA Race Lab morphed into the Mercedes Formula E team. Vendor stayed on at the team, having a successful year, finishing second in the standings with two podiums, one pole and one win. 2020 also saw Vendor named as a reserve driver for Mercedes in Formula 1, although he was ultimately not chosen as the stand-in for Lewis Hamilton during the 2020 Sake Grand Prix. To close off this video, I want to share my thoughts on Van Dorn. If you ask me personally, I feel that Van Dorn was really just in the wrong place at the wrong time during his time in Formula 1. Alonso is a tough teammate to have, and in Formula 1, the first driver you're compared to is always your teammate. For a relatively inexperienced driver to go up against a two-time world champion, one capable of extracting every ounce of performance from any car is a difficult task, and the results show for it especially in 2018, which I personally feel left a huge stain on Van Dorn's reputation, one that really wasn't fair given the circumstances he was in. At the end of the day, I think Van Dorn deserved more time in F1 than he ultimately got, and it's a pity because one can only wonder how he would have performed in 2019 with the fast superior MCL34 or the W11, and he'd be given the chance to drive in Sakir. So we're at the end of the video, thank you for watching, do drop a like and subscribe, follow me on my socials and do share your thoughts on Van Dorn and this video in the comment section. Do stay safe and I'll see you next time.